Welcome back physics students. If all is going well and you're following the schedule, this is the first lab that uh, you will be assigned the air track. So I wanted to make this introductory video just to briefly explain what the air track is, how measurements are collected, and more importantly, how I'm going to pass that data along to you for you to do your analysis. And you'll find that um, I'm going to make it easy for you. So with that said, the air tracks. They are about um, eight feet long. They operate uh, with the same concept of that as a, an air hockey table. Uh, a shot back is connected to the track. It pumps air through the track, and there are little holes on top of the track that the air escapes from, and it elevates the rider that is on top of it, so we eliminate friction. Um, there is a little wire sticking out of the rider, and it is held at a different potential than the actual track and sparks are emitted at regularly spaced intervals at your choosing uh, so that a spark is emitted and it goes from the wire to the track. <clears throat> and the significance of that is that there is a little, uh, a long piece of tape, a uh, thermal uh, tape sandwiched in between the wire or your lab manual calls it a whisker in some cases and uh, the spark goes through that paper and it makes a little dot. So we have a precise record of where your rider was at any given instant of time. Uh, what you have to do is get that long ribbon, put it on your desk, put it a two meter stick up against it, and measure out those dots as carefully as possible. So how am I gonna collect this data and pass it along to you? Uh, what I suppose I could do is do some test runs, get that ribbon, and cut it into like little 10 inch segments. And let's say we end up with five or six. I could take those to a regular sheet of paper, scan it and send it to you. But beforehand, I suppose I'd have to darken the marks because they're pretty light. They probably wouldn't show up. I have to do that meticulously for each dot so that I don't introduce any error. Then you have to measure from the reference point on the, on the first segment to a dot. Then the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. And then the next segment. But on the next segment, when you come across a given dot, the total distance the car traveled would be the distance from that dot to the edge of that paper, plus the length of the original segment, and so on and forth, so forth as you go down the row of ticker tape segments. <sighs> That's a lot of work. You're introducing more error. Um, I got a better way for you to do this lab, and this is what we're gonna do, provided that your instructor um, agrees that this is acceptable, which I suppose if you're watching this video, they have, <clears throat> we're gonna use the Pasco Smart Card. Now, with the Pasco Smart Card, um, the position of this cart that has wheels on it that I'm going to roll across this track um, is connected to some software. So that software acquires data that gives me the position of the cart at any given instant of time. So, no measurements you have to do. Um, with the ruler anyway. Um, I am going to give you um, those measurements. Now, if you're making these measurements with a ruler, uh, uh, in a lot of labs, you do need to report the uncertainty in your measurements. So with the ruler, you'd have some error associated with those measurements. For this uh, system, there's error as well, just like with anything, and I will report that value to you. In fact, I could do it now. It's uh, 0 0.001 meter. Uh, that is the error associated with each position that you will be given. Now, let me put you on pause and give you a quick demonstration. So here is an overhead view of the track sitting on top of my desk. There is a Pasco Smart Card on it. I'm gonna give it a push and there it goes back and forth. Now, let me put you on pause and let's take a look at the data. Okay, let's take a look at a small segment of some of that data that was collected. I plotted position versus time and this here shows um, each uh, data point of the collected data. During this segment here, the cart was uh, traveling down the track right here. It collided with its edge, ricocheted, went in the other direction, reached the edge of the track, ricocheted, went in the other direction, so on and so forth. Uh, with this software, we can do other things. Well, we can do a lot of things. Um, what uh, is of interest to you would be, let's see, there's one lab where actually you get to use this software and you're required to uh, plot um, velocity and time. So here's that curve for this particular data set. 
along this time range here, zero to six seconds. The uh, I had hit re record, but I hadn't touched the cart yet, so it's motionless. My finger was on the cart during this segment here. During this segment, it was traveling along the uh, length of the track, collides with the edge, goes in the opposite direction, and so on. Um, you are going to use this software only in 2100, and in that case, if you're asked to generate velocity versus time, I would simply give you this graph. So, for most labs that involve this, uh, uh, that involve the air tracks, you are going to make graphs like this one here, the position versus time. So obviously, I wouldn't give you this graph, right? You're supposed to generate it. What I would do is, I would pretend that you received the ticker tape, you measured out those dots, and give you a table like this. So this table lists the data points. Again, we're pretending that you took this from a ticker tape. So one is the first point, two is the second point, three is the third, and so on. And these are the positions of those points on that ticker tape. And uh, let's see, I think I told you in the beginning of the video that there was an error of uh, plus or minus 0 0.001 meter. I stand corrected. Uh, when we do the actual experiment, I will re remind you. I, I will check on the exact error, but looking at these numbers, it looks like it's 0.0001 uh, meter of error. Uh, let's see. In, I was browsing through the lab manual, and it looks like they give you a table where you're supposed to fill out the time that corresponds to this position and this one and this one. Well, all of them. Like, in other words, at what time? was your rider at 0.2589 meters. And um, I'm almost tempted <laughs> to give you a table that just looks like this, see how it already has the time values. But, well, you're supposed to do it yourself, so the table you get will just be a list of data points and the positions. I mean, this is trivial anyway to determine at what time uh, these events occurred. All you need is the uh, frequency, the frequency of collected data, which will be provided to you in your, <clears throat> excuse me, in your, let's see, in your lab. I think the frequency is like 10 in one lab. Um, but uh, I'll, I, we're going to have a different frequency with these PASCO cards so that we have uh, a large number of data points that cover a small range of motion so that we can neglect the effects of friction. But I'll give you that frequency. So I hope you found this helpful. And I, I hope I didn't confuse you with uh, you know talking about frequency. But um, once you read your lab manual, it will be clear as a bell what I mean by that. This here is what I will provide you with. So it's like I'm doing uh, the measurements on that ticker tape for you. And uh, with that, let's get on to our experiment. Okay, 1570, linear motion on an air track. Well, of course, we're not using the air track, but we're doing that experiment. First thing to do is make sure our track is level. Had to play around with the feet a bit so that it could be level this way and that way. And we're all good there. Now, let me grab my uh, smart cart. There is a spring here, and we could um, uh, fire it so that it imparts a force on the cart and shoots it across the track. So I could have just as well used my hand, but uh, we may as well utilize that string there. So it is in the track, and what I'm going to do is start collecting data and get it in motion. Okay, folks, that was it. Linear motion on a track. Um, let's see. I, I really feel compelled to uh, 
elaborate on your lab manual. Um, sometimes when I'm skimming through it, it, um, it seems like it could be a bit confusing. Uh, and not that there, anything, there isn't any, anything confusing in this particular lab, but uh, they do want you to have 100 data points and there's a reason why. Uh, without going into it, we don't need that many data points for this system here. They wanted you to have so many because that was the air track and there's uh, misfires in it. But anyway, to give you 100 data points would be a uh, would be overkill. So looking at the data I just recorded, they do, 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 there's 57 data points for the time that uh, it went. Uh, from one side of the track to the other. By the way, those 50 data points, I, I started the clock uh, after the spring left contact with this edge and stopped it before it hit this edge. So the data points pertain to the cart when it wasn't in contact with anything. Now, the error associated with the positions that you are going to get is uh, written up here on the board, plus or minus point zero 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 one meter, and the frequency. I almost want to talk about frequency a bit, uh, but I won't. Uh, the frequency that we have uh, used today is different than the frequency that your lab manual suggests that you use, and again, it's because of the, the difference in systems uh, for. Uh, this one here, the software, can acquire data at a much uh, uh, a quicker, faster rate. Uh, I chose 100 hertz so that we would have enough data points as it traveled the course of this track, which is a somewhat small distance compared to the distance it would have traveled on the air track in your lab. So I put it at a much higher frequency, 100 hertz, and that gave us, like I said, 57 data points. So, I will make a copy of this data, provide it to your instructor, and they will get it to you. That's it for this lab. I'll see you next week.